a moment of silence for this t-shirt because this graphic completely killed it. And it's not even just the front graphic. Look at that f***ing thing. Shut up and take my money. So yeah, White Gold Industries, they're awesome. Now, with all that being said, we've got what? Aren't you going to introduce yourself? I suppose. Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got something super special. It's a shoe that I have been wanting since when was Chicago All-Star? In 2020. Was it in 2020 or was it 2019? No, it was 2020. It was 2020 right before, yeah. right before all the shutdowns. So yeah, I've been wanting this shoe since then because it was an All-Star exclusive in Chicago and everything. It was a two-pack sneaker feature. So it featured the 85 cut Air Jordan 1 and an Airship. And then they released what probably is the the colorway that I would want the most, which were the white and royals, you know, that Nightwing flavor and everything. But you know, Jordan brand just doesn't seem to allow you to want this shoe. Like they want you to want it, but they don't want you to have it. That shoe was super limited, even though it was an original colorway, it was basic, it wasn't a true collab in my opinion. All it had was the AMM branding on there, on the tongue, it was so dumb and lame. Like This was kind of the first GR colorway. I was able to get them thanks to GOAT. But anyways, this is the first general release colorway, even though it wasn't a true GR because it was released at one spot. What? And that was corporate. So I was not able to get them from corporate. By the time I found out that they were actually available online because all of their in-store sales didn't sell through because, you know, lack of interest because, you know, you can't actually get the things. But anyways, I saw them online after the fact. I missed out. So there you go. I had to go over to go, grabbed a pair and I love them, man. Like this is a great shoe. I wish that Jordan brand knew that. So I'm trying to let you guys know, like these are awesome. Maybe put them out so that people can get them because it sucks seeing something so historic swept under the rug. You know what I mean? Like it just feels weird. It feels wrong. But for those of you guys that don't know, this is the Nike Airship, even though this is technically a Jordan brand product well it actually has two different labels on there one says nike airship the other one says jordan airship pe so this shoe right here was designed by bruce kilgore who originally designed the nike air force one he was the one that brought air into basketball shoes for nike and this shoe believe it or not was supposed to be a follow-up to that shoe but it was supposed to be a more slimmed down version so more of an any man type of sneaker kind of like what the air flight line ended up turning into whereas the air force was obviously the beginning of the air force line which was a big man shoe. now this shoe has completely different tooling than the actual airship so that's why they're calling this it's the airship pe there's a whole big i don't know what to call it but just like a bunch of jumbled up history that a friend of mine marvin also known as mjo 23 dan actually was the first one to uncover back i think starting in 2016 and he even had like a petition to like retro the airship and all this stuff because this was the original band shoe from you know 1984 85 and all that stuff before jordan actually started playing in the air jordan one he was playing in this thing because they were trying to like put together shoes for him right after they signed him because I think I don't remember exactly what it was they said that they signed him right after the 1984 Olympics they started the new season in October and so they needed shoes for him really quickly it reminds me of a story that we just told about the shack uh, shack attack sorry uh, the, the shack. shack the shack he's a legend <laughs> sorry I bet you he'd appreciate that he probably would but anyways, as the story goes, MJ was wearing a black and red version of this shoe. And those were the ones that the league was like, hey, you can't wear those. They don't match uniform requirements or regulations. And Nike was like, cool, we'll cut you a check for $82,000 because it was about a $1,000 fine. And they thought that it was just going to be a $1,000 fine per game. Turns out that wasn't the case. David Stern had to be like, yo, back the truck up for a second. Well, I'd love $82,000. That's actually just the price for one game. The second game goes up to $5,000. The third game goes up to 10,000. The fourth game, dude suspended. <laughs> But anyways, if you were interested on a true deep dive history of the airship, I would recommend heading over to mjo 23 Dance channel because I believe that he had a video explaining all of this stuff. He also did a article and stuff like that over at Soul Collector a long time ago. But anyways, let's go ahead. Oh, 
and talk about these bad boys. Man, they smell beautiful. It smells like leather. It doesn't even smell like glue. You know what else does? My Fresh Sense Antidote Spray. This stuff is awesome. It actually smells like leather and glue because we tried to capture that dead stock sneaker smell in a bottle. It took me six years to get to this point. And if you were interested in grabbing a bottle, it is available now. Link is in the description. We recently just did a giveaway of those bottles because we had like 20 something of them, half of them going over to Discord. Half of them were given away to those that put in a super thanks comment, an actual super thanks, not just saying super thanks. A lot of people didn't do it right, unfortunately. So none of those comments were included in the giveaway, but I have reached out to everybody. So make sure that you reply to the comment or check your email, whatever. I don't know how you get those things, but check your comments in that video if you left an actual super thanks so I can get your information so we can get you the bottle pronto. Now, as far as the shoe itself goes, uh, I just think that this is like, what do you think? I thought it was interesting that you said that they were a slimmed down version of the Air Force because when I look at the shoe, mm -hmm. it looks like Air Force and a blazer, Frankenstein together, kind of. I could see that. The blazer was their main like model in the 70s and then in the 80s, 1982, that's when the Air Force One became a thing. This shoe was the in-betweener. So like there was the Air Force One in 82, the Air Jordan One in 85, and then there was there was some other models and stuff, but like this was supposed to be their main school shoe, which is why you see them in white based colorways with just different colored accents and stuff, whether it be blue, red, neutral slash natural gray, whatever it is you want to call it, this orange. But I think that they're just fantastic looking. Again, the original had different tooling, but this guy right here actually features what Jordan wore on court because they were using multiple different types of tooling trying to get him something quickly by the time the season started something that he truly wanted to play in so that's where the Air Jordan 1 tooling comes into play so what we have here is actually slightly different I'll get into that in just a second but we have some of the greatest traction of all time if not the greatest and uh, basically we've got this radial pattern right here I thought that this was identical to the 85 cut Jordan 1 because the midsole or cup sole itself is identical but but when I took these out, the first thing that I noticed was the stars are slightly different. And then I look at the bottoms and the Nike Air areas, the branding areas are just totally different. So we do have the same exact cup sole, which is the white portion, but the outsole was a little bit different, which I thought was really interesting. And then inside of there, there's actually a board glass. So most of you guys know by now that that is a support feature because these shoes didn't have torsional bars or shank plates or carbon fiber plates or spring plates or any of that stuff. So that's what the cardboard lining is for. And then we have a beefcake of a polyurethane insole. This thing is awesome. This is what comes in the uh, 85 cut Air Jordan 1s and while it's a little firm to start, once you start really wearing it, like once you break in the 85 cut Jordan 1s, man, they are fantastic. Like they are mad comfortable. But I do love just wearing Jordan 1s in general. So take that with a grain of salt. They're not like Zoom Air comfortable or Air Max comfortable or Vapor Max comfortable. They're my kind of comfortable, like old man comfortable. <sighs> If the shoe wasn't made so well, this would probably be the coolest thing in the box. It's got everything in there. It points to every piece and what it was there for, what it was designed for. I love that they included this in the packaging. It really dumbfounds me that they make something so good. Like they spent so much time and money on this. Why can't we get these? I don't get it. Like, could you imagine if the game shoe, the 37, the 36, the 35, the 34s, if those were nowhere to be found, but they were like, hey, guess what? This is the new Air Jordan. And be like, cool, where the f is it? Like, I don't know. It would be idiotic. So like, I think it's weird that this, it's so nice. We should be able to just walk into a store and be like, hey, look, it's history. Let me cop this thing and put it back on my feet like it was 1984. Now the materials on these guys, I assumed were gonna be very close to the 85 cut Air Jordan 1s. And I'm surprised slash happy to say that it's actually Actually not like these cuts of leather are slightly thicker in certain areas and on top of that the top coat or the PU coat is so much thinner that it makes all of this like this is buttery soft and it's thick like I'm legit dumbfounded I love the back collar it says Nike Air back there Jordan's PE was a little bit different some of them said Air Jordan some of them I think just said Jordan there was a couple different variations you got a really tall tongue nylon on top of that just like the originals Nike Air branding on the tongue as well and then the most interesting interesting feature is right here at the base of the laces. So most of us know that the Air Jordan 1 has these cool little overlays and everything and they're for additional lockdown. So you got one right at the base, you got one right there at the collar. And then most of you guys also know that the Nike Dunk is a very similar design and those two areas are flappy. If you unlace them, 
you can actually open them apart and everything, which this shoe can do right here at the bottom of the base because this right here makes it slightly more independent so you can get a lot of flexibility in the forefoot area. But they leveled things up where like, I didn't even know that this was an original feature, but when you open this thing up right there, there's a bungee on each side. It's such a neat, weird thing. Like I really don't even know what it's for. Like, is it for flex? Because the flex zone's technically right here, which is what these cutouts are for. So I just think it's really cool and really interesting. Now, as far as sizing is concerned, they do fit true to size. Whatever you typically wear, that's exactly what I would order. I feel like they fit perfectly true to size. The materials are so nice. This leather is not quite performance leather, but it's so nice that like, obviously nobody's trying to buy this to play in, you know what I mean? But if you wanted to, I'm sure you could. You're just getting stuff straight from 1984 instead of 2022. But anyways, that pretty much takes care of it for the Nike Airship or Jordan Airship, PE, whatever you want to call them. I don't really care. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. Let us know what you think about the Nike Airship PE down below in the comment section. Did you get a pair? If you did, sound off below and, and share your thoughts, whether you like the leather, the feel, the fit, all that kind of stuff. And then if you did not get a pair because you're like me and you're just not in any of the areas where they're actually selling, how does that make you feel, man? Because for me, it makes me feel like like, I'm just like, bro, I can't get this. Like, I've been wanting one of these for a long ass time and I have to pay a reseller just to get one. That sucks. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. We'll catch you on the next one. So until then, have a good one.